Hello there, podcast land. I'm Sarah McCluskey and welcome along to Research Adjacent, which is a new weekly podcast about all things research adjacent. Now, you might be wondering what exactly I mean by research adjacent. I will go into this a little more later, but basically it's all the stuff that goes into making research successful apart from the actual research. So I'm talking about public engagement, knowledge exchange, outreach, project management, research communications, brokering partnerships, publishing, funding, events, training, facilitation and the rest. And particularly the people who actually make those things happen. And so in this podcast, I'll be talking to research adjacent professionals about what they do and the difference that it makes. But in this first episode, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about me, about the origin story of this podcast and about what you can look forward to in upcoming episodes. So, first of all, about me, uh, I'm Sarah McCluskey, and I think I already said that, but I have been research adjacent since 1999. So I did do a PhD in the late 90s, and my PhD was in disease resistance in onions and uh, some of the chemicals they make to help avoid being infected. And after my PhD, I did look for research jobs but couldn't find one. And while I was looking for a job, I started working in science communication, initially at the Edinburgh Science Festival. And then I moved on to working in science centres at Dynamic Earth and Life in Newcastle, all this while looking for research jobs, but it became pretty apparent that I was on a different path. So I just embraced it. And that's what I've done ever since. After I'd done that time working mainly in science communication, I moved into working mainly in uh, working with schools, uh, working in university, doing outreach, uh, doing STEM stuff, training STEM ambassadors to work with schools, helping uh, researchers to share their work with schools and organising massive, massive events, which uh, became a bit of a reputation. I was also a college lecturer over the years and I supervised student projects and trained students in research techniques. So, you know, this research adjacent really is a theme here. And then in more recent years, I've moved into working directly on research projects, including public engagement and management of research projects and helping with funding applications and things like that. I'm now freelance though and I work mainly on communications and engagement with research and uh, doing other bits and pieces as well, including starting this podcast. So the podcast, the origin story. Well, it all started in late 2022 when I was asked to organise a panel on alternative careers for PhD students and early career researchers. And I needed a name for the panel and research adjacent just popped into my head. But then after the event, it started to get me thinking and I just couldn't quite get that phrase research adjacent out of my head. And it made me think about a lot of things, both that related to my career over the years and uh, and also some of the issues that face people in similar roles to the kind of work that I was doing. And some of the things that I noticed are that people who do this kind of work, there's a real lack of collective identity. So you have kind of researchers and then you have the others. And uh, it included the fact that I, as a freelancer, didn't quite know what to call myself. So uh, that was one of the the reasons that I've started starting to think that there was something in this. It also was very apparent in all the work I've done over the years that there's a lack of recognition and credit for the people who do this kind of work. The researchers get all the glory. Uh, maybe another day I shall tell all some of the... Um, stories that I have to tell about situations where I did a lot of the work and the researchers got all the credit. Often not, it often wasn't the researchers fault, it was often the system, Uh, but it's a really, really common situation. Then there was the fact that as with this panel I'd been asked to organise, these careers are seen as a kind of backup plan for failed researchers and I just don't think that is justified at all. Um, I think these are really valuable and skilled particularly careers in their own right and uh, and can actually be much more fulfilling, better work-life balance, I think, than uh, research. So they shouldn't just be seen as the kind of fallback. But because of some of these issues, a lack of recognition, credit, collective identity, there's a real lack of career structures and professional development for the people who do this kind of work. And we're also shut out of the conversations that are going on at the moment. Not always, but often shut out of these conversations on how to improve research culture because it just isn't recognised how much we're contributing. 
So it means that research adjacent professionals exist in a kind of vague limbo. No one knows what to call us, so most of the time they just don't even talk about us at all. And I want to just read for you a quote which also was part of triggering uh, this podcast, which was in a report which came out late last year, published by HEPI, and it's called Research Leadership Matters, Agility, Alignment and Ambition, and the author was Matthew Flinders. And Matthew says... The research leadership challenge brings with it a need to build innovative skills-based careers frameworks for those professional research support staff who increasingly play a role in the design and delivery of projects yet rarely receive the recognition they deserve. At the moment, increasingly large numbers of university staff exist in a professional hinterland somewhere between the traditional university administrators and academic staff. It is for this reason that people in this group often professional knowledge brokers based in boundary spanning units or centres are increasingly referred to as third space staff who lack any discernible career framework despite the contribution they make to filling vital research leadership roles. And I think that absolutely nails it and uh, explains just the problem that we are facing here. And frankly, I got a bit grumpy about it. And I started to wonder what I could do in the situation I'm in to help bring some of these issues into the spotlight. I don't work in a university at the moment. I work with universities, but I'm not actually directly employed by any. And I started to think that maybe as an outsider, I can say things that people who are more worried about job security perhaps feel that they can't say. I also love podcasts. I love chatting to people about what they do. And so the idea for this podcast was born. So just to clarify before we go on, I promised I'd say a bit more about what I mean by research adjacent and why I've decided to use that term and embrace that term for the podcast, for my career. Uh, Hopefully it might be something that you feel you can relate to as well. And it's because, as in that quote from Matthew Flinders, we're not researchers, we're not administrators, but we are integral to the research ecosystem. And the kind of things I'm talking about are public engagement, knowledge exchange, outreach, project management, research communications, publishing, funding, organising events and conferences, helping with uh, collaboration, helping with partnership building, facilitation, all the rest, all the other stuff, too many other jobs to mention. And the alternative job descriptors have just never felt quite right. Professional services sounds too transactional and corporate, Uh, It makes me feel a little bit like an accountant. And research support suggests that we are there to prop up the research system. And that makes it seem like we are less important than the researchers. So I was also very uncomfortable with that term. Research adjacent feels better. I can't quite remember where I first read it. I think it might have been on on Twitter. And coming up uh, in one of the future episodes is uh, Kirsty Ross, who was the first person I think I saw using it on Twitter. And research adjacent, uh, to help you understand why I've chosen that, I'll tell you the dictionary definition that I found on dictionary.com for adjacent. And it says that adjacent when used in hyphen with something else means related or very close to a specific topic or activity, supporting or being an ally of a group or subculture, or having the traits or interests of a group or subculture without being part of it. And that just feels like it sits better for me. So that's why I've decided to call this podcast Research Adjacent. And that's why I've decided to call my career Research Adjacent. Uh, That's why I'm trying to help encourage other people to embrace Research Adjacent too, if it feels right for them. So what to expect from this podcast? My plan is to post a new episode every Tuesday. You'll be able to find it in uh, whatever podcast app you prefer to listen to. It will mainly be interviews, although I may do some uh, episodes where it's just me chatting. We'll see how how things go. And I'm going to be talking to all kinds of research adjacent folks who do all kinds of different sorts of jobs. I'll be asking them about what they do, particularly both the highs and the lows of what they do. 
I'll be asking them about how they got into doing this work because I think those origin stories are often really interesting and they can help people who are maybe aspiring into coming into this sort of work. It can help them understand how they might start on that journey. And I'll also be asking them about what being research adjacent means to them. And just to let you know some of the interviews that I've got in the bag that you can look forward to in upcoming episodes. Next week, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to go with a lovely chat I had with Kirsty Ross, who is a public engagement specialist based at St Andrews University. And she, uh, as I say, I think, was the first person I saw using uh, Research Adjacent on Twitter. Then we've got Colin Wilkinson, who's a dear friend of mine, who is a public involvement advocate, uh, but also has a very has had a very similar career path to me. We've worked together many times over the years. We're going to have Nina Ruddle, who is at Glyndora University in Wales, and she's a Civic Universities champion. Duncan Yellowlees, who is a presentation skills trainer, working exclusively with universities. We've got Faye Watson, who is a public engagement manager at the University of Edinburgh and a real connector of people. That's what I got out of the conversation that we had. She, you know, she's really that person who joins up all the dots and helps people get in touch with each other. Mary Robson, who's a creative facilitator at the University of Durham. You might be wondering what on earth a creative facilitator is. So if you listen to that episode, then you will find out. And uh, also a really interesting chat I had with Abraham Mamela, uh, who was recommended by Faye Watson. Again, that connecting thing there. And Abraham is a communications and engagement specialist, but based in Botswana and working across Africa. So he has a really interesting different perspective on uh, what's going on in this research adjacent world. And also in the bag, we've got Lorraine Coghill, who is also a great friend and colleague, who's a schools outreach expert uh, based at Durham University as well. So that's some of the ones you can look forward to. Lots of others uh, coming up after that, I hope, but those are the ones that I've got recorded now and ready to come out. And so the last thing really to say is that I hope the podcast resonates with you. Uh, Please stay in touch. You can subscribe to the podcast in whatever podcast app you prefer, and then you'll get notifications of new episodes. Uh, Please review the podcast if you find it interesting and share it uh, on social media or with colleagues or whoever. If you want to find us, just search for Research Adjacent on your favourite podcast app. And I would love to hear what you think of the show. So please send me feedback and suggestions. You can either do that by going to my website, which is www.researchadjacent, that's all one word, researchadjacent.com. And there's a little form you can fill in there. You can also find me on Twitter at resadjacent, R-E-S adjacent on Twitter. And you can send me a message there or just tweet me message. And uh, you can use the hashtag research adjacent as well on social media. So I think that is it for now for our first episode. I hope that has been an interesting way of setting the scene for you, help you understand what you can look forward to. And I hope that you will tune in next week for my chat with Kirsty. But that's it for now. Thanks for listening. Bye.